To achieve air superiority in the past, each nation has tried, without complete success, to find the right fighter to fit its current total tactical situation. A fighter that was great for patrolling the trenches in World War I, or one good for escorting bombers, was obviously not the fighter to be used in another time when control of the sky over an entire country or ocean was at stake. Until today, there has never been that one fighter that clearly demonstrated the range, the agility, the firepower and versatility required to dominate the total air combat environment. The F-14A, the total Tomcat, is the latest in the long series of Grumman Cat fighters. The first was the F-4F Wildcat, early in World War II. The F-6F Hellcat, with its 19 to 1 kill ratio, was the most valuable carrier-based fighter in World War II. The F-8F Bearcat, the lightweight fighter of its day, a modified version achieved and still holds the world's speed record for propeller-driven aircraft. Korea saw the F-9F Panther, the Navy's first jet fighter to see combat. The F-10F Jaguar, a concept ahead of its time, was the first fighter with a variable sweep wing, an idea which paid off 25 years later. The next cat was another lightweight type fighter the F-11 Tiger, a longtime favorite of the Navy's Blue Angels. A Mach 2 version called the Super Tiger set a world's altitude record. Each of these fighters in their turn was designed to meet the threat of its day. But what of today? The late 70s and 80s. Today, the U.S. Navy is being challenged around the globe by a growing Soviet Navy. Anti-ship missile carrying aircraft and ships, defended by sophisticated anti-aircraft systems and high performance fighters, along with the imminent introduction of aircraft carriers, underwrite the Soviet objective of controlling large areas of the world's oceans. The Soviet supersonic blinder bomber and the newer swing wing backfire both armed with the long-range anti-ship missiles, pose one airborne threat to the fleet. And then there are the fighters. 15 or 20 years ago, the Russian fighters were lightweight and short-ranged. Designed for defense with little or no weapon systems, they have been used only when weather or the element of surprise was on their side. As the tactical situation changed, so did Russian fighter design. Needing long legs and an all-weather capable, we start to see the heavyweights appear. First, the Fiddler, capable of carrying long-range radar-guided missiles. This was followed by the Foxbat, a Mach 3 high-altitude fighter armed with air-to-air radar-guided missiles and a look-down, shoot-down fire control system. The trend toward swing-wing fighters, as evidenced by the flogger, is confirmed by the not-yet-operational fighter called the Fencer. With its long-range guided missiles, the Fencer can stand off, find you, and fire away. The old lightweight fighter concept of the MiG days appears to be dead. Rounding out the threat is the Soviet long-range cruise missile, launched and guided from their aircraft or from ocean-going guided missile carriers. This, then, is the threat that faces our fleet. It is the threat that we must design to counter. The F-14 Tomcat, with its AUG-9 Phoenix track while scan weapon system, is the only fighter now, or projected, that has demonstrated the capability to counter this threat.
It has demonstrated its ability to seek out and destroy every type of target that it could be expected to encounter. It can track missiles and other airborne targets at ranges in excess of 100 miles and guide six Phoenix at the same time. It has destroyed targets in an electronically jammed environment as well as maneuvering and high and low flying targets. Using single shot systems without AUG-9 would require 75% more fighters for the fleet air defense. Another weapon the Tomcat can bring to a fight is the medium-range AIM-7 Sparrow. The F-14 can carry a mix of Sparrows and Phoenix, giving it both medium and long-range missile capability on the same mission. Still another weapon available to the Tomcat crew is the AIM-9 Sidewinder, providing missile firepower at shorter ranges. For close-in air combat, there is the 20 millimeter M61 gun, capable of firing up to 6,000 rounds per minute through the entire flight envelope. For in addition to its standoff missile capability, the Tomcat has the ability to successfully engage any current or projected Soviet fighter in a dogfight. At the heart of this ability is the variable sweep wing, really a part of the weapon system the wing is continuously and automatically positioned by a central air data computer, providing the Tomcat with unequaled performance in the demanding air combat maneuvering environment. In air combat maneuvering exercises, the F-14 has faced a variety of opponents. Some have been modified to simulate Soviet fighters. Others have been lightweight fighters in our own inventory. The results are always the same. In one-on-one -on -one or multiple aircraft engagements, F-14s have defeated anyone who showed up. The F-14 Tomcat is operational. Fighter Squadron 14 and Fighter Squadron 32 are operating full strength on the East Coast at Naval Air Station, Oceana, Virginia, prior to carrier deployment later this year in the John F. Kennedy. Fighter Squadrons 1 and 2 are deployed in Enterprise on station with the 7th Fleet in the Pacific. During deployment, both squadrons achieved and sustained a high degree of readiness. It should be noted that on this, their first deployment, the Enterprise fighter squadrons require fewer maintenance personnel and fewer maintenance hours per flight hour than the Navy's F-4J. Navy fighters of today and tomorrow must be capable of many roles. Fleet air defense through destroying hostile missile carrying aircraft, their missiles and their fighter escorts, as well as anti-ship missiles launched from surface craft and submarines. There is also fighter escort for shore strike operations, dogfight superiority, target and barrier defense and interdiction, Fulfilling these operational requirements against a growing threat that is global in nature and sophisticated in weaponry requires a total fighter capability. Today, and for the foreseeable future, there is only one. 
the F-14 Tomcat, the total fighter.